Forced removals formed an integral part of apartheid's pattern of oppression, and the raising of District 6 was one of its most infamous examples. The homes of the community were all flattened, but the spirit of District 6 lives on in literature, art and music. And in a way, it's become emblematic of all the so-called mixed areas that were destroyed in the name of segregation. It was an experience shared by many South Africans, and District 6 Kanala is a vibrant musical that brings a long gone era back to life. I headed off to find out more. The origins of District 6 can be traced back to 1867, when it was named the 6th Municipal District of Cape Town. When the forced removals began just over a century later, the community was some 60,000 strong, with a cosmopolitan mix of colours and cultures. This interracial harmony was the very antithesis of apartheid and District 6 was doomed. Before the forced removals in the 60s and 70s, District 6 was a mela of cultures celebrated by the people, art and music. A melting pot where people lived despite apartheid imposed differences. For this Mandela Day, it is these differences we want to celebrate. And the celebration begins at the District 6 Museum. Established in 1994, the museum has assembled an extensive collection of images, maps and artifacts, chronicling not just the geographical area, but the community that called it home. It doesn't rely purely on exhibits to provide testimony to the past, as it has also become a center of living memory, where former residents can tell their stories. One of them is museum educator, Joe Schaffers. Joe, what is your story of District 6? Well, I think my story is virtually everybody's story in District 6. It's all about the forced removals and the effect it had on people's lives. The heartache, the total destruction of community, where people are taken out of areas that they've been living virtually all their lives and then removed to total foreign places and the psychological damage that was done by that forced removal which a lot of people haven't recovered from and where people have been shifted to now under the new dispensation people have been given the right to come back into the areas that they've been shifted out of but it's not going to be the same because everything that you had known is all gone 50 years later, what does Nelson Mandela Day mean to you? For me, it's a very, very vital part of my life to try and try and turn things around, to try and make people look at each other again as another person, because another, not another creed, color or culture. Because my simple philosophy is treat the other person as you'd like them to treat you. And if you can get the, that going, I think that a lot of your problems in this world will be solved. Within walking distance of the museum, the Athol Fugard Theatre is housed in one of the few buildings to have survived demolition. What better way to celebrate than to sing and dance? The Fugard Theatre is the perfect location for David Kramer's musical District 6 Kanala as it's located in District 6 itself. Created and directed by David Kramer, District 6 Kanala celebrates the vibrant musical culture of the community. Zaki headed upstairs to see the costumes created by Berry LaRue and now under the watchful eye of wardrobe supervisor Vidard Albertus. As an actress, one of my favourite parts of the rehearsal process is getting into costume. It's the final transformation that just brings the character to life. How do you do, ma'am? <laughs> Thank you for having us in your wardrobe. Hi, guys, are welcome. How do you go about creating costumes for a show like this? Well, on this show, we had a really talented costume designer, Barry LaRue, who works closely with the director, so we would have worked closely with David Kramer in the whole process of looking at what the story is that he wants to tell, looking at the period, especially when you have a show like this, which was set in the 50s and 60s. Do you have a lot of creative license on a period piece like this? I would think so, yes. People that would have seen the show would have known that it starts with black and white and into the second act they go into colour. So it's the whole thing of an album coming to life as well. From act one you'd have Klopse wearing grey to them going to really bright your primary colours. So actually using those bold colours in a show. I cannot wait to see these creations live on stage. But Zaki would have to be patient. 
because the cast was still warming up with an imaginary game of catch. I love this game. I'm going to go join in. By now, Zaki was on a roll and she couldn't wait to learn some of the steps. It goes. Just banjo, banjo again and then you're going to go step forward, right, back, together and elbow and front and up to me. It's hard that you see the string sings. <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> More! Thank you! Thank you! Nicely done. Andrea, without giving too much away, who do you play and what is your journey throughout the production? I play the role of the narrator, who's a young girl who got her photo album from her late grandmother. And she basically takes you on a journey throughout District 6, telling you all the stories that her grandmother told her. It's an all-encompassing journey of a day in the life of District 6. Hopscotch, Kenny pick up sticks In Caledon Street in District 6 Look, man, you play many characters. Which is your favorite character to play and why? I don't have a favorite character, but the one that sort of gets a lot of attention is the character called Sally Gramophone. It's an older guy. He's a coach of a Malay choir, and it, it reminds me of my dad. Look, man, what has been the highlight of the show for you? The audience their reaction. Um, it's amazing to see how we managed to take them back to a time, to an era, to a sound with these massive screens and images and, and you can just see how we sort of pull them in into that time, into that era. For many years, David Cromer and the late Tully Peterson formed a partnership creating successful musicals such as District 6, Fairyland and Cat and the King. David, without telling us too much, what is Kanala about? Well, Kanala is a celebration of what life used to be like in District 6. We get to meet all kinds of characters who might have lived in District 6 and we get to sing about them and dance about them. It's happy music, some sad songs and uh, a whole mixture of emotional... Um, it's an emotional briani. What is it like creating work without your long-time partner, Talib Peterson? It was hard for me to go back uh, without Talib being here. But at the same time, it was great to revisit and to get the songs back on stage again because it's a tribute to the musical input that Talib made on all of these shows. What is the significance of Kanala playing at the Fugard? It's very significant that we should, we should be remembering District 6 in one of these old buildings. And I know that Talib would have been thrilled uh, to think that his work has come back to District 6 because all the time when we worked together, there was never an opportunity uh, or a place to perform uh, back in the district. What is your message for Nelson Mandela Day? Your heritage is important. Don't forget the sacrifices that people like uh, Nelson Mandela made in order for us to be where we are today. Not even the wintry Cape weather could keep theatre lovers at home and the foyer was soon packed with people eager to take a trip back in time to one of the most colourful chapters in Cape Town's history. I am nobody's fool, I didn't get much school I never got my JC, was food sick, I was retreat The apartheid states wiped District 6 off the map but the spirit of the community was brought to life by the onstage energy. 